So before the great spiritual leader Mahatma Gandhi led India in its struggle to independence, he practiced law in South Africa. And one incident that happened one day that really made an impression on his mind was when he was obliged to step off the walk and to stand in the gutter while a group of white men passed by so that they would not be contaminated. Reflecting on this experience, afterwards, Gandhi wrote, it's always been a mystery to me how men feel themselves honored by the humiliation of their fellow human beings. It's always been a mystery to me how men feel themselves honored by the humiliation of their fellow beings. Now Gandhi made that remark not in anger, but in surprise. So in the Gospel today, Jesus addresses people who pride themselves on their virtue while despising others. They honor themselves by humiliating others. His listeners are in for a shock when he tells them a parable about these two men who go to the temple to pray. And one was a good man, the other was a real crook. One led a decent religious life, and the other was mixed in corruption. He was a tax collector who worked for the Romans that occupied the territory, and he made sure that he collected high taxes so that he could get a good cut himself. So the good and the bad, they go to pray, but only one of them actually prays. The Pharisee addresses himself, his prayer to himself. There is no doubt who is in the lead role, and his prayer sounds like the annual report of current assets. He blesses God that he is not like so many others, although he seems unsure about who he is exactly. And he compares himself to the tax collector whom he treats as a doormat to walk over. He makes it clear that he fasts twice a week and he gives 10% of his earnings to the poor. That's certainly good. But for all his giving, the Pharisee never gives himself. His real self is hidden and secret. The tax collector, we're told, stands off in the shadows and he has no annual income to boast of, but his percentage is stolen from his own people, including the poor. But he tells the simple truth about himself. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He doesn't beat around the bush, he just beats his breast. He knows the truth about who he really is, and he throws himself entirely at God's mercy. He has nothing to offer God but his own wrongdoing and brokenness. They are his. So he doesn't go outside of himself, but he recognizes the truth about himself within, and he hopes that God's mercy, the mercy of God, can take care of that. So he owns his own self, his true self. So his real self is no secret. Now Jesus comments on the story and he says, but I tell you, now remember who his listeners are. They who honor themselves by despising others. What Jesus now says will come to them as a shock to their whole religious system. It's like a short. Everything is going awry. They can't believe what they're hearing. The tax collector gets much more than he asked for. He prayed for mercy. He prayed for mercy, but he leaves justified. Amen. In other words, in the judgment of Jesus, everything is turned upside down. The tax collector's prayer pierces the clouds. The Pharisee's wow. prayer reaches its destination. Wow. Himself. In the Gospel, Jesus is described as the friend of tax collectors and sinners. He doesn't put their sinfulness on hold, 
but he enlarges their world by calling them away from sinfulness into the freedom of God's mercy. So long before Gandhi was mystified by how people felt honored by the humiliation of fellow human beings, Jesus was mystified even more. For him, sinners were not just sinners, they were beloved sinners. They deserved more than the violence which keeps them oppressed in their wrongdoing, the violence which rubbishes them and writes them off. If we come to pray and realize that our religion has a heavy investment in criticizing other people and even to the extent of despising others, then you will just go home as you came in. Mm -hmm. God, be merciful to us sinners, is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Anything else is for the mercy of God. So we pray that our observance of Lent can be modeled on the tax collector. Why? Because of his humility, whose humility was so much more to be desired than the pride of the Pharisee. So Lord, we pray, come to us today. Come to us in these remaining weeks of Lent and invite us into the humility that is truth. We are sinners and you are the center and the Lord of our lives. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.